Okay, so uh, any thoughts? I'm sure there are a few thoughts out there. Uh, anybody want to ask this panel a question or two? I think the, uh, the commentary is, is quite clear. Um, the need for engagement with industry, as we saw in the Japanese paradigm, uh, is one where we have to think a little further down the line. We have a question at the back. There you go. Yeah, hi. Is it? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, really interesting perspectives. I was wondering, and, and some of you commented on this, what's the role of competitiveness in the system in driving innovation? So let's say if there's an Ontario hospital and they've been doing things the same way for the last 50 years, what would make them change? Would it make, would, would, would they change if the next door hospital has a better gadget and can attract more, more patients? Or, or if there was a bad outcome, if they wouldn't adopt it? I don't know if we have set up a competitive system in Ontario. And so my big question is how to do that. <coughs> I'll, I'll that start because I think I said co competition in my, one of my slides. And I think it was Senator Kirby's report that talked and, uh, and talked about how there wasn't competition and that we needed it. And the QBP model is interesting because the more you do, the more you get paid. And, and so the more you drive those volumes, the more funding you can get. So how do you attract those volumes uh, from the community? And my argument would be, well, you have to differentiate yourself. And usually you differentiate yourself on quality. And that would be safety, outcome, access to care, patient experience. Those are kind of the elements to it that would make one hospital different from another. I always ask people that say, oh, I loved going to Guelph General Hospital. And I say, well, why did you like that? Like, what was the experience that provided you? Well, it's the only hospital in my community. Well, okay, but if you, if you really are comparing hospitals and you have a choice of where you want to go, Hospitals are hospitals. They, many of them provide similar services. So how do you really differentiate? And it's on quality. And, and that would be my argument. Um, and, and once you differentiate yourself on quality, you'll have a better quality agenda. You'll get more patients. You'll get more funding. And that cycle of, of, of value and, uh, and prosperity will keep going up. Roy. Yeah, I'll, I'll also add, I, I do think that's a bit of this cultural component around Canadian healthcare. Again, because we have universal funding, right, and maybe the healthcare we have delays, we have long wait times, all those kind of things. But as Canadians, we don't complain about that. And we don't necessarily shop around because we know we have access to care. You know, in the U.S., it's a totally different market. And, you know, your example of robotics in the U.S., um, almost every corner hospital, mom and pop hospital in the U.S. has a Da Vinci robot. And I bet you they have more than one. And it's not because they necessarily provide better outcomes. It's because on the billboard, they can put a sign up that says, we do robotic surgery and they're competing for patients in that marketplace, right? Now, sometimes they have better outcomes and they can show that, but th there's a different um, level of need in a private payer system and a need for a system where you're competing for patients around innovation and, and to change your model. That, that I'm not sure we have that sense of urgency here in Canada, to be honest with you. Ken, you want to comment? And, and uh, so I'm going to take it a little bit of a different direction. So I, I like the idea of competing, and I'm going to take the idea of competing to an interesting conversation, conversations, in fact, that I've been having from coast to coast. So in speaking with British Columbia, so this is above the hospital level. So speaking in British Columbia, policymakers, they believe they compete with Alberta for resources. Uh, when you talk to people in Quebec, they believe they compete with those of us here in Ontario. We talk to Ontario, well, they compete, we believe we compete with Ontario or Quebec and, and BC and Alberta. The reality of it is, is I want everybody to understand this, for the big pool of resources, I'm not talking the small at the hospital, I'm talking big pool of resources, the transformational types of resources that Dr. Rubin's attracting through PMCC, that type of resources on that scale, Ontario's not competing with Quebec. We're competing with Great Britain, Germany, France, Australia, United States, Japan. That's the game that, that, that we're, we're competing on. So I would ask this group, um, for those of us who believe that competition's important and it drives better outcomes, et, et cetera, that we take that up a, a, a notch above where we're thinking about competition and we position this health economy to be competitive and offer advantages to massive multinational investments um, that, that differentiate us from, from everybody else. I mean, the reinforcement around quality as a driver of competition, I think, is 
I mean, a, a paradigm that we have to think a little broader about. I mean, the idea of a global value definition and outcomes definition lets us compete. Quality is a great innovation driver. And, and as just as has been pointed out by Ken, if, if we can demonstrate our performance on a global market, people will come after those innovations, whether it's the change management that let us get there or the technology we developed so we could have a Toronto scientific uh, selling a uh, product, an anchor <laughs> company, uh, instead of a Boston uh, scientific, maybe a little maple leaf or something like that. So uh, um, one of the other pieces I think is really interesting is that, and this goes to the quality conversation, as we had Health Quality Ontario up here earlier, I'm going to connect the panels a little bit. I talked to Greg Hine recently, and he has this new digital health strategy. And um, I noticed in the digital health strategy, which is really great, it doesn't talk about reporting. It doesn't talk about quality measures flowing through the digital health strategy. And so, I, I mean, I was kind of curious, did HQO and talk to Greg about, I mean, it seems like you got a quality initiative, right? And the data flowing, we're seeing this from other kinds of companies want data flowing, you know, the data to start moving, but the digital health strategy doesn't speak to data and reporting of outcomes. What are you guys seeing in terms of when your technologies are brought to Ontario? Is the infrastructure there? Is the, is the, is, are we in a position to actually contribute valuable data uh, back to the demonstrating of the value of, the new, of your technologies that are being sold? Do we, do we actually, you know, are we still seeing a sort of holding back? Is there any breakthrough there for us to, to yeah, sell our know-how globally? And it's, it's, it's a big question. Um, I would say, and, and I'll just speak on behalf of kind of Johnson Johnson, I, I would say the perception would be that um, it's difficult in Canada. It's difficult from a data standpoint, it's difficult from an analytic standpoint, um, it's difficult to capture outcomes and, and have a system where we can report back. So I'm not sure we would necessarily be seen here as easy to, to work with from a Canadian perspective on that side. I, um, I had the pleasure of um, working in a decision support department at the hospital. And there was nine systems that we had to integrate together. And we had 10 people working full time trying to do that to provide reports. And it was incredible when we saw the slide from Estonia today, the, the big busy slide with all those systems coming together. It was just, I think that's our dream and our utopia, but we all need to start working together instead of uh, buying disparate systems and creating our own uh, silos and, and figure out a way of creating the standardization across, uh, across the industry. And, and like I said before, I, I think it's the role of the teaching hospitals and the hospitals themselves to help direct that integration uh, within the hospital system and within the hospitals themselves, but then spreading that across our, our industry to create that standard. Thank you, sir. Really? I'll just add one more point too. You know, when, when I talk to customers in transparency, the feedback is we're not easy to work with either, right? Our systems at times don't link up. Our systems at times don't talk to the systems of our, our customers. So it's not just a one-way street here, Dave. I, I want to be very clear on that. We need to, as industry, do better on that front also. Well, I've seen many companies bring product forward now where they offer the outcomes collection architecture independent of what the government or the healthcare system is mm -hmm. providing because it's easier for them to bring proof of the value back. And we're going to see this more and more in procurement. Here's the product. Here's the software that goes with it that will measure so we know we can show the true return. And the hospitals basically are out of the loop in that. And so this, we need to have that core infrastructure. It's like roads that we don't have to start to be able to participate fully in this, in this value demonstrating and cost calculating uh, paradigm. And we do ourselves a great disservice by breaking a small country, 30 million, into you know, 12 or other jurisdictions as well. So mm -hmm. that piece that you guys didn't talk about at all is that when you sell product across the province, across the country, every province is another battlefield uh, from my understanding in terms of, of, of funding. And how does that frustrate uh, engagement when you bring your, uh, your partners from the US up to, to Canada? Does that? So I'll, I'll start and, and jump in. Look, what I would say is in, in, the, in the four and a half years since I've been back in Canada, I've seen a shift around government's focus on innovation, right? I see great work that's happening in Ontario with the role that Bill is in and the funding for that. There's great work actually happening in Alberta with the, uh, the, the scientific clinical networks. Out east in, in Nova Scotia in the Maritimes, there's great work happening there and you, you'll see some announcements coming out of Quebec very soon of work there that's ongoing to get make sure that we have innovation into the system, which is all wonderful. The challenge we have is 
every province is doing it differently. Yeah. So the outcomes that Ontario might be looking for are different than what Quebec is looking for, it's different than what, or the approach that Alberta is going. You know, I would love to have a national approach so that we could do things once, do it well, and get adoption um, innovated. So, you know, the positive is we're moving in the right direction. The negative is we're still very fragmented in the approach. Yeah, and a couple comments uh, as well. So I've, I've been managing a Canadian entity inside a global multinational for a while, and, and, and Roll is quite right. So it, every time we report out, we fundamentally have to re-educate uh, re people on who we are as Canadians uh, and the health system. We're not managing a health system. We're managing 13 separate health systems, 10 big provinces, three territories. That's what we're managing in this country. The other thing that, that people need to be aware of is that patients in this system are expenses. Patients in other systems where there's private care are sources of revenue. So the incentives are different. The incentives are in other systems to drive more patients through because that means more revenue, more profit. In the Canadian system, because it's a cost center, we limit expenses. That's, that's what we do. In fact, as a public payer monopoly, a 100% public payer monopoly in this country, there's only three other, two other systems like it in the world, North Korea and Cuba. And recently, Cuba's gone to, for medically necessary procedures, charging private pay. So now it's Canada and North Korea. So that's <laughs> the system we're in. So we're like other systems, but we're most like North Korea. So th these are the, the nuances. Now, I tell you that to say this. So that sounds like it's a lot of headwind. The, there, is a, there is an advantage for us. As a single payer system, we have access to confined data. We ought to find a way to use that as a strength. If you can imagine, because this is, this is the secret sauce, this is the exceller uh, in the health systems around the world. People are trying to solve the cost of multi-episodes um, of patient interaction with the system, follow them through the life cycle of a disease, and account for what's the best decisions along that process. I believe, based on the fact that we are single pair, we got headwinds in other areas, but this is an area that we should own. I think this is an area that as Canadians, as Ontarians, we should be dead serious about um, figuring this out and then exporting that knowledge to the rest of the world. And I think that, you know, like any organization, we need an, a, a structure. And, and, but I think that that structure needs to be flexible and it needs to be fluid. Uh, but most importantly is we have to listen to the customer. And we have to work with the customer and stop guessing or assuming what the customer needs. Because sometimes we're wrong. And, uh, and, and I think that's important, that relationship. Other questions? Yes. It's right in the middle there. Thank you. Great presentations. Shahir Bilani, uh, Mars Exite. And so my curiosity, and I think this is more for, from the industry perspective, we've seen some great models of um, new ways of doing business in other parts of the world where they're looking to leverage their strengths and, and, and monetize those, and that's super. Um, we also recognize that you know our system is what it is, and if we were to move into those future vision models at some point, that, that would be idealistic, and it's great, and it's a great goal to have. But practically speaking and pragmatically, could you give us a couple of action steps that we can take from where we are to where we'd like to get to, just from the perspective you have uh, managing your Canadian businesses relative to you know your global organization? You want to take that one, Rolly? Sure, I'll start. Look, I, I think um, one of the things that I think would be the most actionable thing we can do is right now we, we as industry and we as, um, as, I guess as industry or, or as a system, we hide behind procurement, quite frankly, as a barrier to innovation. And we throw broader public sector guidelines up as a reason to say we can't do this. We can't have dialogue. I think we've got a very good example that happened recently at South Lake in their cardiovascular program where we said even within the BPS guidelines, it's okay to have competitive dialogue as long as you're transparent with the process. There's nothing in BPS guidelines that say you can't have a dialogue with between industry and a customer and, th and they showed that very well. And I think because of that, the conversation changed from just around a product and a price to a product, a price, services that can be delivered along with those prices. So from my perspective, if there's one thing is, look, we're always mm -hmm. going to have procurement. We're always going to have pressures on price. But let's make sure we're doing it with dialogue and, and value in mind versus just um, you know, the, the cost of the lowest widget. That would be my, ex my example. Rob? Um, I think our greatest leverage right now immediately is around supporting and encouraging organizations like OTN. Get the care out of the walls of the hospital and start supporting care in the community in some shape or form. 
Ken. And real quick, uh, I believe, first of all, it's a great question. I believe that the best way to change where we are to that closer to the place where we want to go is alignment of stakeholders. I believe that, that we need to find ways to align all the stakeholders in a strategy. I, I don't know that we have a strategy. Uh, I believe that we have a strategy that talks about let's improve patient outcomes. I don't believe we have a strategy to fund that strategy. Uh, what we need, I believe, is um, like other countries have done. They've got state-sponsored strategies which include regulatory, which is a little bit difficult in Canada, but it, it's something we should probably strive for. Regulatory alignment with payer alignment, with uh, provider alignment, um, and industry alignment. If we align those stakeholders in a way that was a, we had a, a unified strategy, I believe we'd be dangerous in this country. So Ken, what would be the timeline for that? I mean, I don't, it, it's gonna be more than four years, which seems to be a timeline that dominates a lot of, actually it's like two and a half years, that dominates a lot of financial decision making in the province. So uh, it seems like you want a longer term vision. Um, have that framework operate? Well, I know I think we need to challenge that. I, I think you take a look at Shinsu. Shinsu as the Prime Minister made regulatory changes, he did it overnight. Um, I, but I what's the return time on investment? For the, what's the timeline for that ROI? Well, so he invested what he called a billion dollars over 10 years. He received in three years six billion dollars of economic activity. So if we do it right, if we choose the right places, I think we can, and, and the Prime Minister after all has challenged all of us, all of us in this health ecosystem um, to drive the thinking and move Canada from an extraction economy, which is what we are today fundamentally, to a knowledge economy. This is the perfect platform. Health is the perfect platform with our expertise and our experience to move from the extraction economy into the knowledge economy. So with the political will, and if it likened to the political will of Shinsu Ibe, we could make policy changes very quickly that would align stakeholders and allow us to compete very quickly. And, oh by the way, if we did it right, um, we would see the return on the economic activities very, very quickly. Okay. Any last word from the panels? No, we're good. Lunchtime. 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 Okay. A round of applause for our panel.